Easton, what did it mean to you to stick at Leafs camp so long this season? Yeah, you know, obviously it meant a lot. I'm really happy to be drafted there. And then getting to camp, you know, you don't know really what to expect uh, being at, you know, my first NHL camp there. So to be able to stick that long, you know, meant a lot. And, you know, I, I learned a lot there and I brought a lot back to junior with me to, you know, show the young guys, you know, what it takes to make that, you know, jump to the next step. What was your favorite moment? Um, Probably just being out of that six on five in my first game, you know, with Marner, Matthews, uh, Klingberg, all those guys, you know, it meant a lot. So uh, that was pretty cool. And uh, that's a moment I'll never forget. Can you take us uh, through that moment, like on the bench when Sheldon uh, calls you out? Like, was that a surprise? Were you trying to make eye contact? What was that moment like? No, yeah, obviously it's a bit of a surprise. You're a young guy, so you don't know what to expect. But, you know, I thought I had a good game uh, there. And, uh, he gave me an opportunity to go out there. We ended up tying the game. Uh, fortunately, we lost in overtime, but uh, that was a cool moment being out there on the six on five there. I want to take you through some of the some of the Leafs guys, kind of rapid fire, and you tell me kind of what's the thing that stood out to you about them the most, or maybe if there's something you learned. So we'll start with the captain, John Tavares. Yeah, he's always in the gym. Uh, you know, he's a pro, and he played in London too, so that's pretty cool. But uh, before the game, you know, he's got his you know headphones in. Uh, you know, really dialed in and doing his own, you know, warm up routine. So I thought that was pretty cool. You know, you kind of learn from that. And obviously he's been in the league for a long time, so he knows what he's doing. So just kind of how, you know, he gets mentally and, you know, physically prepared for a game. Uh, that was pretty cool. Did he tell you anything about his London days? Uh, he liked them. You know, all the London guys did. They all love, you know, being here in London. So I'm trying to, you know, soak, uh, you know, up junior hockey here in London as much as I can. Austin Matthews. Obviously, you know, uh, he's one of the superstars in the league, uh, you know, his shot. So uh, after my first practice, you know, I was getting, I was giving him some one timers. So that was pretty cool. And uh, that thing just floats right off his stick. So I uh, just shooting around with him at that of practice was uh, pretty special. How does that happen? Did, were you just standing in the right spot or does he recruit you there? No, I kind of like kind of just stand in the right spot and then you just play pass and then he put one somewhere near his gun and he gets it off. So, yeah. William Nylander. Uh, just the skating. I feel like his edges are unreal. And at the end of practice, he's always working on his cutbacks. And, you know, I, I use a lot of cutbacks in my game. Obviously, they're not nearly as close to good as his. But uh, as soon as he gets out of his cutback, it's like so many crossovers. And it's just like he's floating on the ice. So, yeah. He's crazy. Uh, did you see this coming? Like when you saw him in camp, you're like, this guy's going to have a monster year. Yeah, obviously. You know, I think a lot of people knew he was due for, uh, you know, he was going to get a monster year. And, uh, he's lighting it up right now, and uh, you know his work ethic on and off the ice it, it shows. Morgan Riley. I th I really liked him. You know he talked to me a lot, and uh, great guy and great player. And his skating, you know, he's really solid out there. So uh, I feel like he's a really powerful skater, and uh, just like his first passes are really good, and obviously his D zone's unreal. Like you go up on up against him one on one, it's you're not gonna get by him. Finally, Mitch Marner. Uh, obviously, one of the London guys, too. So I was talking to him quite a bit. And uh, obviously, the Hunters always talk to me about him and, you know, what he was like here. So obviously, he's a great leader. You know, he wears a letter and uh, just his hands and uh, how he can turn on a dime and stuff like that. But also his D zone, you know, he's got a good stick. So just kind of trying to play like him a little and, you know, do what he did. Uh, but, you know, his defensive zone, offensive zone, his 200-foot game, uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool to watch. What did the Hunters tell you about him? Uh, obviously, he came back for his third year, and he lit it up, and they won. So, uh, you know, he was a good team player, and uh, they built it around him. And obviously, he was positive and, you know, helping everyone, uh, you know, out on the ice and off the ice. And, uh, you know, he was a good team guy. So uh, he wasn't selfish either. You know, if you're unselfish, uh, it's easier to go for it because, you know, you just want to win. So uh, that, that was good to hear. Did he have a message for you on the way out? Because I know he's a huge uh, London fan, still watches a lot of OHL. Yeah, he sent me a text. He said, good luck this year. Kill it. Uh, he'll be watching. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool to know that he's watching and seeing what's up. Yeah, he will be watching. Absolutely. And probably telling the other Leafs uh, what's going on. Yeah. Uh, um, did the organization did did the organization have a message for you? Because they were really impressed with what you did at camp. Yeah, they did. Obviously, you know, keep getting better each and every day. Take what you learn here and, you know, try to come back next year and make it either further, you know, uh, stuff like that. So just kind of, 
taking it, you know, day by day here and uh, stacking good days on good days and, you know, just coming prepared and, you know, taking that pro mindset down to the junior level. What is the focus when it comes to your game the rest of this season? Are there areas that you're really wanting to either improve or drill down on? Yeah, definitely my 200 foot game. Obviously, you know, it's fun putting up points and stuff, but being able to block shots late or be out there late or when, you know, be out there with a minute left, whether you're up a goal or down a goal, I think is huge. So just, you know, really nailing down my D zone and good defensive will lead to good offense. Well, you mentioned it's not about points, but the points do pop off the page. 27 in, in what, 14 games since being back with London. How have you felt about your game since you've been back in the OHL? Yeah, I felt pretty good. Uh, you know, I want to keep producing here and helping my team win each and every night. So uh, I get played a lot. So, you know, with the ice time I get, you know, you just got to try to produce with it. So uh, obviously, like I said, I play a lot. So uh, going out there, it's pretty easy to, you know, uh, get confidence and be able to put up points when you're out there a lot. So just kind of keep building on that each and every shift. Yeah, you play in all situations, including the penalty kill. You Endeavor, Barky are just terrorizing other teams' power plays. Well, you've combined for like five shorthanded goals already this season. What What's working so well for you guys uh, on the kill? Well, I think, you know, our PK coach and our forward coach, Rick Stemmen, does a really good job there. And uh, we learn a lot from him. And in my 16-year-old year, even when I wasn't playing, you know, we do PK clips. And 17-year-old year last year, obviously, I was killing a lot. So just kind of learning more and more each year from him has helped a lot. And then uh, like I said, good defense leads to offense. And obviously, even I know when I'm out there on the power play, I don't really want to play in the D zone. So, uh, you know, power plays, you know, they're out there. Uh, some tend to be a bit lazy back checking and stuff. So if you get a two on one, I feel like that, you know, trailers are uh, pretty wide open. It feels like uh, the kill just with your tenacious play kind of suits you. Like, did you enjoy it? Like, what do you what do you like about killing? Yeah, I like the kill. Uh, yeah. like I said, if you play right, you get chances. And I feel like we have so far me and Barks there. So I uh, love playing with him, you know, in any, every situation on the ice and, uh, you know, he's having a great year too. So having him out there with me has helped me a lot. I see you already have a fight under your belt with Sarnia as uh, Tyson do said, I saw it was right at the end of the game. Like what happened there? Yeah. Late game. Uh, they're beating us and, you know, you kind of don't have your best game and kind of just got to show you still want to you know, obviously be there. So just having that, you know, little jam in your game to showing them you're not scared opens up a bit of, you know, room on the ice for you. So uh, just showing your team, you know, you still want to win and still want to be there. You handled yourself pretty well uh, in that situation. Has anyone given you any advice on fighting over the years? Yeah, Brandon Prest always comes out to the night's practices. So uh, he's helped me a bit. And uh, obviously I got those tough Bolton brothers on my team. So those boys... Uh, you know, teach me a thing or two. Obviously, they're pretty tough. So, uh, yeah. So you're off to a good start. I'm sure the the experience at Leafs camp gave you some momentum. What's your goal for the rest of this season? Yeah, obviously, you want to get invited to World Juniors and make that team. So that's one of them. And uh, just obviously win championships and uh, take it day by day and, uh, you know, practice by practice, game by game, and just take it slow and really enjoy it. Have you noticed there's uh, more tension on you since the Leafs drafted you? Like, for example, like even this interview is probably not happening if the Leafs didn't draft you. Like, have you noticed there's a little bit more of a microscope uh, on everything you do? Yeah, I don't mind it. It's pretty cool getting off the bus, you know, signatures to sign and stuff. I kind of like that stuff. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot of pressure, you know, being a Leafs draft pick. So uh, you kind of, you know, got to learn to deal with that. But it's been good. And obviously, there's a lot of haters and a lot of lovers out there. So kind of just got to listen to the people, you know, who, who love you, but obviously use that hate as motivation. So, uh, yeah. So you don't, you don't shy away from criticism or like, if you see something that you use that as fuel versus some guys like to kind of completely tune it out. Yeah. I use it as fuel. Obviously, you know, there's some people out there that don't like it. And I think it's, you know, kind of funny that they tweet it or whatever. So uh, it is what it is. And you kind of just got to build off of it and use it as fuel.